So th this is a dilemma now. Um, mm. What happens with um, somebody who's looking for yield or fixed income oriented, and now we have treasury bills back to almost zero, right? The 10 yep. year, what's, what's the 10 year now? 70 bips or something? I don't know. Six, 70 or 60, something 60 like that. 60 something, okay, um, still. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, you know, the, this kind of, um, you know, when you see this, you're going to start to see people reach. Let's go into MLPs, let's yep. go into jump yep. bonds, let's go into leverage, you know, CCLs and all that stuff. Um, yeah. what, what, what's the story here? I mean, how, how does somebody go, going into retirement or, re, you know, what, what do they do? Um, it's a big issue because if, if, look, if you're 25, 30 and the market sells off, you know, don't worry about it. It's a trade for, you know, the 2040s, right? And but you should be mostly fixed in income. Anyway, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Fixed income for people who look, even if you're in the, your fifties, I'm, you know, I'm 57. I, I have a good chunk in fixed income. Why? Because I should, um, you know, I, I was able to lock up some yields at higher levels earlier in my life. So that's good. But some of those single, um, some, some of those individual securities are going to mature. And when I reinvest, I'm going to be going from six to 60 basis points. So right. that's not great. Um, I would prefer not to go down the quality scale down to triple B, much less high yield, but you, you might have to, um, it's, it's, it's been honestly, John in investment management. I think the biggest challenge in the last few years, and, and please tell me what you think. I think the biggest challenge is not equities. Equities have been pretty good. It's what do you do with your fixed income allocation? Rates have stunk for, for years. In real after inflation, uh, real returns after inflation have been negative for three or four years. We're not nearly as horrendous as the Europeans. I, I think as you mentioned, is once but, they come, um, once they mature, you're going to get sticker shock the wrong yeah, way. Yes, yes, that's exactly and correct. So. Um, you know, I think there's still a feeling that even if you're near retirement, you should still have maybe at least 60% of your assets in stocks because you yep. have at least a 20 some year life expectancy and you're still vulnerable to um, uh, some inflationary concerns, whatever. Absolutely. So I guess at that point, the fixed income is kind of uh, what I would say, it, it's a cushion. That is, you're not gonna make a lot of money on it. You no. make money by going in the stocks and you come in late, it's, it's late, but you're not gonna lose it necessarily unless you, know, you have some sort of a weird inflation. So one of the things that I kind of feel should be a part of the 60-40s, which, which, which is what I call a gilded 60-40, five to 10% should be in gold. Yeah. So, uh, Candace, can you bring up the gold chart, please? So here's uh, gold, and um, we're going back 15, 16 years. And so recall, you know, gold peaked in 1980, and then for 20 years, it kind of worked along the bottom, two to 400. And then we started a rally in gold, uh, you know, in the new century, and um, notice gold kept going straight up to 1900 or so by August of 2011. And then since then, gold consolidated, but it's consolidating with an important technical pattern, a massive bullish saucer. The, you rarely see these, and when they happen, they are very, very bullish. So, if this saucer holds, and again, there's no 100% certainty in technical analysis, nope. you would measure from the bottom of the saucer to the 1900 area. Um, and so that's at least $1,000, which would indicate that gold could hit 3000 within a year or two. Okay, so that's kind of, uh, you know, your fantasy chart based upon pure, um, uh, well, let's say uh, uh, quantitative interpretations of a chart pattern like saucer. So far, we've seen gold take out all important resistances, the 1500 area, 
the wormhole massacre that we've seen um, back in 2013. So gold is kind of like a truck going down the highway. It's maybe picking up speed along the way. It's hitting a few bumps because people have to dump gold to raise cash, to pay bills, whatever. But it's just marching along. So it's a very bullish pattern. And so maybe that's the answer. I'm not saying you put half your money into gold. No one's that smart. But 5 10% could be that additional gain to offset some of the loss on the fixed income in a 60-40. That would be kind of my opinion. Yeah, you know, John, I think you're right. And, and, and I've been kind of agnostic on gold the last few years just because equities have been so, such a compelling story. But the chart's really powerful. If we can get up over, I guess that's 1900, you're right. I mean, what's to stop you from getting to 2500, 2700? But I, I think we're one in, uh, thing. MMT now, we're, we're printing. Uh, yes, yes, so yes, 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 yes. Is yes. the balance sheet up to now? Is it six trillion or something? Six or something? trillion. Six yeah. trillion. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Mohammed El Aran, who I really respect, made a very good point on a podcast a couple weeks ago. He said, look, I mean, the one risk we're running right now, yeah, flood the zone right now, liquefy the economy, don't make the mistakes we made in 21 and in the 30s. Correct. Agreed. 100 percent. But he and he pointed this out. Forgetting just the monetary aspects of it, you might have price inflation just because demand is going to jump at some point. You have a V-shaped recovery, that means there's going to be demand. And I think what's also going to happen is a lot of companies need to make up for the fact that they had two quarters, whatever, how many quarters it's going to be of lost revenue, they're going to raise prices. And I think you're going to have an inflationary shock. It's not going to be Argentina. It's not going to be the United States in the 1970s. But three, four, five percent inflation would be significant. And yeah, that can drive gold right through the roof. I mean, monetization yeah. started yeah. with really us getting off the gold standard. When was that? Like 72, right? 72, yeah. yeah. And actually, what most people don't know is that we first monetized the dollar in, under FDR in 1933. One of his first acts in office was to devalue the dollar against gold. And that eliminated almost half of the U.S. debt because now um, we, you know, changed the uh, equivalency. And so that jump-started the economy in 1933. Now, we're no longer on the gold standard. It's, it's a fiat currency. So right now, gold is just reacting to maybe what I would call a quasi-M3 effect, which the U.S. Fed no longer uses. But, you know, kind of if you print enough money, it's going to eventually monetize yep. gold. Yes, agreed. So and I think, I think also, has, yeah. and John, not to cut you off, but I think one other source of support, remember COVID-19 is hitting all countries around the world. It's starting to hit India. It's, it's hit China, who knows the real extent, right? But right. In Indian investors historically are big buyers of gold as a store of value. Gold is a common commodity, the same commodity globally. You know, I think you're going to see demand from Asian investors who are redeploying from you know, financial assets to physical assets like gold in the next year or so, just because people are going to be naturally concerned for how this thing goes through their economies. Well, look at even before the corona effect, all the emerging markets, their currencies went down the toilet bowl. So yep. look at Turkey. Yep. We had, a, I did a course in Turkey, was it now five years ago? It was 2.2. And now what are we? 6.8 to the dollar, right? Yeah, uh, I was I was in Brazil teaching a class for Knife last year. The real was, I think, four to the dollar. I think it's collapsed down to six to the dollar as six. of late. That's a, that's yeah. a huge move. Hey, I remember one and a half when Brazil got on its feet. Remember how strong right. the real got? Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. yep. Like 2010 or something like when that. You would go down in every week, 2% valuation. Yep, yep. Yeah, so Not that yeah. far back. Now look at the Russian ruble, you know, we were 30 a few years ago. What are we up to now? 70 something? Something like and, that. Um, yep. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, if you're looking at even in Euro terms, um, record prices are in gold in Euro terms, right? So only the dollar, but we're getting there little by little. 
So, um, um, what, what, you know, what about somebody who says, well, let's go to MLBs and, you know, you, you, uh, you made the statement that you don't want to really take a risk on the credit curve, but is that what it's going to come to? Anybody who wants a yield is going to have to really, uh, you know, walk the tightrope and, and take a chance or what? Uh, I think uh, so. I think that, Look, I mean, uh, high high yield spreads came in to about maybe the low point was about 370 over Treasuries at one point. Uh, now they've probably blown out to six, seven hundred, maybe even more, depending on the credit. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly, the fact that the energy uh, energy uh, as a component of high yields, maybe 15 to 20 percent of all high yield issuance, that's helping spreads blow out. I think if you've got a responsible high yield manager, someone who takes credit into consideration, they may be able to pick those companies that have been sold off in conjunction with all high yield companies that maybe do have better balance sheets and stuff like that. There are going to be better companies in a universe. I think that's your best bet, but it still means you're taking credit risk. You're going credit away risk, yeah. from full faith and credit. Yeah. And the Fed has put it, the Fed's actually done this to us over the last 10 years, right? So this is nothing new. It's just a more extreme moment in time. There may be some value in municipals. I'm not a municipal person, but I know that um, completely tax-free uh, yields shot up to about 4% for certain states and municipalities. Right. If you're careful and you avoid the states of Illinois, I live in New Jersey, state of New Jersey, city of Chicago, if you avoid those credits, I think there's some value out there, but it's... It's hard to pay the rent on a fixed income portfolio. Right.